Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Ever want to get started with the electronics kits? Today we're going to show you how to program your first Arduino. Welcome back to Know How. I'm saying welcome back to myself because yes. I miss doing this show. I love this show. You. This is a show where I, as Actar, shows us how to actually do stuff. Yeah, you know, like get down and dirty, get down and solder or put something together. And this is one I've been waiting for you to do. I'm very excited about this. Yeah, today we're going to take a look at the Arduino. Now, a lot of folks have been asking us to do this. They want to get started with electronics. And the thing is, the Arduino is one of the simplest ways you can start. Now, when I grew up, we had Heath kits. So you could build a radio, you know, a crystal receiver radio or a doorbell, that kind of thing. But, of course, electronics now is no longer analog. It's digital electronics, and a lot of the stuff that people are doing is computers, digital programming, that kind of thing. So this is, in effect, like a Heath kit, like a, a electronics project brought into the digital era. Right, it's got a microprocessor on there. You can put instructions on here. You can put all kinds of sensors on this device, and you can make all kinds of cool things happen. One of my favorite things I've seen on the internet is you can use it to control things in the real world. One of the best examples I've seen is the secret door knock detector. So when you knock on this, this device, yeah. the Arduino can actually sense the vibrations yes. and then unlock. We've got a video of it So right you here. knock the door and it opens it? Yeah, so you can program your Arduino wow. to know and notice what's going on. Here it, with here it is. The Watch, he's going to knock on the door, knock, knock, and it goes chunk. And this door is going to unlock. I mean, this is just. That's pretty cool. This is the way. I mean, this is, this is one of the projects you can eventually now, get to. I think it's pretty apparent that this is of limited use, and most of these are more for fun and for educational purposes. Is something you're going to use. The R, but who knows? The Arduino. Is that the processor? Is that this whole circuit board? What is an Arduino? Uh, well, the whole thing, it's just like, it's the most, one of the most flexible electronics kits you can get. You've got a microprocessor. That's the these, microprocessor right here. You've got the pins right over here. You're going to connect it to this breadboard. This is part of a SparkFun kit. So this that, is a kit that's kind of built around the Arduino right. processor. The, the idea being that it's got input. So really, this is a mini computer. Effectively, yes. And you're going to be able to add sensors and things to get it to do stuff. Right. All right. So we also do you ask, have a do you have a thing you want to do today? I will, but I, I wanted to ask the audience what they ah. found on the web or what's their favorite project they tried out because every week on Twitter I put up a message. This is the tweet I put up. I asked, "What's your favorite Arduino project that you've done or seen?" If you answer with a hashtag hashtag #TwitKH, it'll show up on the show. So that's if cool. Hope has wondered how this works. That's how it happens. First one up was Jared Simmons. He showed us a way to open a garage door using an Arduino. Oh, this neat. is one of the craziest things I've seen. It works with an app with your phone, iOS device. Cool. It requires maybe about $30 of parts. It's one of the, it's absolutely insane that it actually works. We've actually interviewed the Arduino folks on our uh, open source program, Floss Weekly. So if you want to know more about kind of the, the, pro, the idea behind this and so forth, you could find out more there. And there are other microprocessors that are used in this way. Uh, and it's not just SparkFun. There's lots of different places you can go to get an Arduino kit like this. But SparkFun is a good place to start. I and think. not just yeah. for nerds. One, a friend of mine, Eric Not Sandine, just for nerds. Dig this. You can learn to brew beer with it. Or you can use <laughs> it to brew beer because if you need a controller somewhere, it's really helpful. Probably use the uh, thermocouple or the, uh, the, the thermistor, right. the, the, the measure, uh, temperature measure. Right. You, you just have so many different things this can do. But before you can get to any of that, it's somewhat of a daunting thing. You're looking at this, you're like, what can I make it do? I know I had to learn how to use this because I was also like a radio kit guy. I was not using these things. Right. Uh, so we're going to make something very simple happen uh, to show you that this is possible. We're going to make this little servo actually move. <laughs> very simple idea. And I know that sounds silly, right? We've got a little servo right here. And the thing is, once you figure out how to get servos to move, 
And then you could move all kinds of things, like door locks right. or garage doors or things like that. I, one of the reasons I like this is because you can you can teach a kid to program, and certainly uh, uh, I think this, these projects are great for adults, but a lot of it's about inspiring kids, just as the original Heath kits were, inspiring kids to get excited about electronics and digital programming and things like that. But you could teach a kid to program, but when it's tied to a physicality like this, it just makes it more real for them. And they're going to learn a lot about how computers work from this. Did you do any programming to make this work? Uh, there's programming included so you can mess with it. We're going to show that. I'm going to okay. mess with some variables. Uh, the way I find programming, I learned HTML and PHP, things like that. The way I learn is by doing. And right. the thing is, cutting and pasting then screwing with that code, that's how I learn best. Right. But to do it theoretically is always a mess. Well, and this actually does something. This so that's do something. doing writ large. So I like that. Yeah, so, so how do we get started well, here? Well, let me quickly explain the kit. This was actually our... This is from SparkFun? This is from SparkFun. I think it, it came with everything. Uh, I believe our uh, producer's wires. child was playing with this. He set up the LED things. So if Karsten's kid can do it, I sure hope I can because <laughs> that kid's brilliant. So we're, Everything's in here, though, even little LEDs that you can LEDs, light up. motors, resistors. There's resistors. Uh, so diodes. you'll learn some analog electronics from this, too, it oh, looks yeah. like. Yeah. You'll find out that diodes only work in one way. You'll find out that transistors oh, can be an issue. Uh, I know that, some. by the way, some of these things, that you get a book with this, it tells you everything you need to know. And I'll How much is the SparkFun kit? I believe it's around 95 bucks. Well, that's not bad. So it comes with everything, though. Wow. Servo motors, spinning motors, uh, and instructions and code. I, I don't have a kit around the house anymore, but I might get this and just pretend. It's just, it's just <laughs> a, a fun time. But the thing is... Could you lend me your two-year-old and we'll, uh, we'll sure, play? Sure. Well, be careful with the sharp things with them. But uh, I will say this. I did try out the spinning motor thing. Bit of a disaster. I will really? Say because... Uh, did you do something wrong? Did you paste the wrong code? I did not paste the wrong code, Leo. I found out that apparently some of the directions may not be 100%. Uh-oh. So the weird thing is, I had to learn a whole lot just to make it work, because right. I'm like, okay, well, diodes work in one way. The transistor may not be the proper part because right. it wasn't included in the kit. It might have been a different one. Okay. So you get to learn even by doing it. But I did get one to work. We're going to do the servo. All Very right. simple, really easy circuit diagram. They oh, so they even give you a little map. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this tiny little map right here. We're going to show like a much larger version of it. What it does, it actually fits theoretically one to one over the breadboard right here. Okay. So then you would just pin it, pin it down and then just put your wires on it. Because there are a lot of uh, different connections there. That's right. Be, you could easily get the wrong one. Now what I found though is that this doesn't line up 100%. Oh. So I'm just going to transcode the actual things when it says like E3. If you can do Battleship, you can put. <laughs> this is like on. Battleship, isn't it? This is effectively. Hey, let's write a Battleship game. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll do the spinning motor Ooh, first. Actually, that'd be kind of neat. Wouldn't that be kind of fun? So, like, the ship itself kind of sinks and moves out of the... Well, okay, we'll think of that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is just start hooking up wires. Now, it comes with a whole bunch of colored wires, but it doesn't really matter what color it is. On the, on the, on the actual schematic, they're color-coded, so you know what is what, but they don't correspond to anything, so don't worry. It's just all wires anyway. So let's actually hook this up. It's pretty simple. Do this in close. I heard that Ben Heck did... Uh, Use this to make luggage, robotic luggage that followed him, thanks to sonar in his genes. He did some crazy, crazy. things. Ben Heck is a, a, a god, actually, when it comes to this kind of stuff. Crazy. Uh, and, but this, you have to learn how to start somewhere, right? Yeah. Before you can go ahead. Before we make the luggage that follows you, let's just make a fan spin. All right, so let's make, <laughs> but this is, oh, it could be a fan. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to keep putting these wires in. So we got, let's see here. Somebody in the, in the chat room, a uh, tourist, is pointing out that this Arduino, the processor, the microcontroller in the Arduino is, is actually not, uh, is a fairly sophisticated processor. Uh, you know, you're playing with something that's a real computer. He says more powerful than, let's say, a Commodore 64. It's going to line this up. B5, very But it is low power. In fact, uh, uh, it'll use uh, the USB port from your computer to yes, power it. Yes, it is a 5-volt adapter. That's not included, but you can power it with USB, which we will we'll do momentarily. Or you can plug it into the wall. Sure. Six, eight, yeah, I actually have it. If you buy that additional thing. Yeah. And I'm going to attach the servo itself, which okay. is, let's see, E567. So this is a, this is pretty basic. I think the hardest thing to do is to literally be <laughs> able to read the hardware. putting things in holes. That's it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so far, so good. If you can handle that. We're going to connect this to power, though. Okay. So this is the 5 volt. Everything's labeled on this side once we get over there. Could, I guess you could, by miswiring, you could burn this thing out, right? Uh, if you, if you really got to try. I don't you think... pumped 5 volts into this CPU or something, right? I, well, I mean, it's all... I guess... Well, actually, no. I haven't been, I haven't been able to screw it up you haven't, yet. You haven't broken it yet. No. That's a good sign. I might break it right now. Oh, uh, let's okay. see. All right. So now we got it wired up, right? Okay. 
So and this is from the diagram, and this is one uh, of the projects that the actually, kit comes with. This won't work because there's an extra wire. Oh, ah, you've learned something. Right away. Whenever there's an extra wire, Something's that means you left something out. 7A into pin 9. All right, real simple. So uh, this is one of their um, malt. They have quite a few. It looks oh, yeah, like 12 different, different, different 14 different uh, circuits that you can create. Right, this is a single single server, single servo server. Okay, well, right now that shouldn't do anything unless we actually program it. So now ah, we have the wiring set up. They even now. give you code. Now, this looks very much like C. Yeah. So I think it's based on it. It's really, for me, it's more about figuring out how it works. I'm really bad at remembering what is what. And then in the booklet, they'll show you exactly what you're doing, what to put where. They'll give you code samples. They'll say three things to try if it's not working. Mm -hmm. And then, and I love this, that for kids, this is a great idea, some ideas for making it better, something you might want to add to this. So right now, we attach a USB cable, and we download the Arduino software, which is available for free. Okay. And we can actually put a program Should I hold a little fan this. up, or is this thing going to spin? It might, if I get this to work right. All right, so well, let's look at the code, because right, now so it's all about code, right? So we're going to go into file. This happens to be an example. Now, if you go into Arduino file examples servo, okay. we're going to do a sweep. I like this. This came with it. Yeah, so this came with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to load it to the actual uh, Arduino here. So we're going to hit Upload, which is this little arrow. So this has, uh, via the USB cable that you've got connected to your computer, this has not only power, but it also can get data. Right. So it's going to. So you can actually load it in. So it must have a little operating system on it. So here. it's uploaded, and now we're looking at around why is nothing spinning, Leo? You know oh, it should be spinning now? Yep, it should be making a noise. So now we're going to check the connections because... Did you run the, run the, compute, run the program? Mm-hmm. It's automatic. Oh. Done Let's uploading. See. Let's mm. see if everything's lined up. Excuse me. So this is going to happen from time to time, so don't worry about it. Let's take a look at your... Okay, we'll do this. Now, we also got your Raspberry Pi, which is a similar idea, although it's a full computer in a kit. Are you going to sometime... That is coming graduate? up. Are you going to graduate to that from the uh, Arduino? I've got a crazy project. You probably plugged into the wrong hole is what you did. That's likely. Yeah. That's the thing. You're gonna That's a little tricky. I mean, there's a lot of different... Yeah, I'm just trying to see what's going on here. Five. Oh, yeah. holy just cow! Set up to the wrong pins, holy right? cow! That's so, just something's going on now. So now, right now, we got the server moving, and if you look at the code, you can actually see there's a bunch of variables involved. Now, this is actually not sticking in very well, so I just need to keep that in there. Would you mind, Mr. Uh, Laporte? I had a feeling that, that was coming. I appreciate. All right, I'll hold just, that down. Okay. Right, you see the servo. Okay, so now you're going to change the code and see if we can change what happens with that little. Yeah. Thing. It's going, it's oscillating. It's going back and forth. Now, one of the things about this is with the example code, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's commented out that's not used in the code, but you can use to learn. Now, this is how I learned to do a lot of things. So it says goes from zero degrees to 180 degrees. So we can change this positioning here to like, let's say 270 degrees. This is exactly the kind of thing that the guy who did the door opener had to do to shoot the lock. Mm -hmm. You might then add other code to sense vibration, and I'm they have sensors to do all kinds of things. I'm going to change the, the delay to like three milliseconds. Let's hit that and Let's upload see. it. And upload it. So we're now changing the code. The co that's why this stopped. And on the bottom here says oh, uploading. Oh, look now at that. It's going back and forth faster. It's changing the pattern. So look this is you. how you Look at learn. you. You little programmer, you. This is how you start. Oh. I mean, this is, this, is, this is Arduino 101. We're trying to figure out how to make this stuff work. No, it's, but can I tell you something? For a kid, to see, to write code and then see it actually have a real world impact is, is fantastic. For a kid, for me, I was like, oh, it's working, finally. <laughs> I was just super psyched. I mean, it's one thing to write code and, you know, I, work as in. As a simple man with simple dreams. Uh, yes, my dream is to move servos without doing a whole lot. Now, Hack it, baby. Right now. Now, if you're a kid, not like I as, but if you're a kid at this point, you're going to really start messing with this. You're going to put weird numbers in. You're going to try all sorts of stuff. And it's that sense of hacking and experimentation and curiosity, I think, that's so important to develop in kids. I'm going to keep messing with this. You're, I, you're old and burnt out. It's too late for I you. I don't think I'm burned out. It's because, too late well, for see, you. I'm going to try to make this open my garage door like I saw before. I'm going to try out a lot of different things with this because what I really want to do is something in the studio. I don't want to give that away just Ooh. yet. So, I'm so just, this is the equivalent of an Arduino Hello World. Right. This is like exactly. the now, basic Because right now... Right now, what's our input? We have power, right? right. Power means run the program. Right. What we could do, there's all the stuff included here. You could have it, I believe there's like a piezo sensor in here. There's also uh, You could make a, a portable dog sensor. killer with this. I wouldn't, dog killer? No, that's a, remember that Steve Gibson's, and actually it's just 
uh, bark killer. It oh, stops dogs from barking I with didn't... hypersonic sound. But he... <laughs> <laughs> I did not know where that was going yeah, at all. Yeah, you gotta listen to you gotta listen to security now if you want to know what that's all about. But the thing is, you can have, probably have this stuff go off when you have I don't know lights going on in the studio and you want the curtains to but go see, down. But see, you're an adult, and so you're looking for a practical application yeah. for this, and that's what's great. Kids, they just want to go. Well, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And this is a great place for them to start doing that, start exploring, and get turned on to the idea of hardware and software and real-world applications. And I think it's a great way to teach programming and electronics. Like you were saying before, this, this kit comes with tons of different things you can try out. This Love was the that. simplest one. The idea was, look, show you guys it's doable, because I had to make it doable myself. I had to figure this out. I do want a practical application. I'm going to have a pretty goofy application at some point when it comes to this. Good. Uh, that's, that's that simple thing. And now it's time for a know-how quick tip. So. You guys have been asking some things. Can I let go of this now? Uh, no, I, want, I need you to hold that for the rest of the day, Leo. It's like <laughs> okay, the Leaning Tower okay. of Pisa. If you let it go, all heck will break loose. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to show you a quick tip. Something you should, if you're going to do networking at all, check this out. I'm Ayaz Akto with Know How, and this is a quick tip. We're going to explain to you how to make an Ethernet cable. Because when it comes to networking, wireless is great and everything, but nothing beats a hardwired network. And today we're going to show you how to do that. Here's what you're gonna need for this project. Some ethernet cable, an RJ45 plug, which comes with a little guide, it's kinda of hard to see. A pair of scissors, I like having needle nose pliers available, and a crimping tool. So this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna use our crimping tool as a cutter. We're gonna remove part of the sheath of this wire. And cut off about an inch of the casing. This is why I like using needle nose pliers. I can just rip this off in case I didn't cut cleanly enough. Get rid of that. Now we have wires. You got twisted pairs, we're just gonna untwist these pairs. This is where all your networking magic happens, is over these fine, fine wires. So we're gonna untwist everything because they have to be ordered. Well, you can't put the wires in any old order. There's two methods to doing this. I use the T568B method. You might be wondering, why choose B over A? Does it make a difference? Well, it only makes a difference as long as you stick to B on both sides or A on both sides. I chose B because the person who showed me how to do this said, use B, so I'm using B. Okay, for the T568B method, we're gonna start with orange and white, followed by orange, green and white, blue, blue and white, green, brown and white, and brown. Now we've got to put this into the guide. Can we get in close and show you how small this guide is? It's a tiny, tiny guide. It helps you put the cables right into the RJ45 connector. What I'm gonna do, I like to straighten out my cables. These are a little bit screwy. So you just, you can take a screwdriver or your needle nose pliers, whatever's kind of roundish, just to straighten out these crinkled cables. Makes it easier to put them through the actual guide. So you're just gonna thread these wires through the guide. You know, these are so tiny, I have a hard time actually seeing what I'm doing. I just kind of trust my fingers at this point. Just kind of the, the white and orange, kind of push it through. Don't worry if it gets stuck, it just means that the end is frayed. Just keep going and repeat. You have your, your wires pre-ordered, so we're gonna put orange through. Then we got green and white. It's the blue and white. Followed by green. Followed by brown and white. So we're gonna finish up. We got all of our wires through the guide. Now you wanna get this guide as close to the sheath as you can. So what I do is I usually use needle nose pliers for this because it gives me a good grip on the wire. So I'll take that. So it gives me a nice good grip and I'm pulling the guide as close to the actual sheathing of the cable. Probably can get a little closer than that because that's a little far. Okay, so now we obviously have a whole bunch of excess. We need to cut that off. Okay, now we've got that. All we gotta do is put it in the actual plug. So we got our tab facing down, we got our guide ready to go. We're gonna place it right into the plug. And then you just gotta crimp. I'm gonna ratchet down. What that does is it puts a little piece of plastic right there, holds the cable in place. So if you can pull on that, it means you've done a good job. So once you've done it to one end, you should do it to the other side because this is not exactly terribly useful on its own unless you want to use it as like a tie or something. Now remember to stay to the same guide. If you used the B method, use B on the other side. This is really useful for setting up custom length cables. Need a super long one or a short one, 
This makes it really easy and it's crazy cheap. Now, if you want to test your cables when you're doing this, you could get a network cable tester. Me, I'm kind of lazy. I have laptops laying around. I just connect it to my router, make sure everything runs that way. Either way, you should test your cables before you start deploying them everywhere, okay? Because this is a learning experience. But once you know this, you know how to make your own Ethernet cables. It's one of the things we learned. Uh, and, and the advantage of making Ethernet cables is, yes, you save money, but also you can get them exactly the right length. So you don't have a lot of extra cabling going around. But Colleen learned very quickly. We had the crimper. We, had, we bought a spool of, of hundreds and hundreds of feet of, of Cat6. But you got to test those cables. So That's we also good. spent some money on an Ethernet cable tester because it is true. Once you put them in service, it's a real pain to swap that, them out. And some folks are talking about putting boots on the Ethernet cables. I suggest that as well. It, it does. Those block. are the little rubber things that go at the back of the of the of the. Clock, right. Clock so, there. so that way the tab itself doesn't get knocked out when you're pulling on it. So it if it gets, all the time. If it gets, for my runs, I, I don't bother with the boots. Yeah. But then again, if, if you guys are doing this in uh, somewhat of a crowded area, I definitely suggest it. It's just something I should have gotten. You guys are right. Uh, I just keep forgetting to do that. Right. But I, for long, the long runs, I love using Ethernet because, you know, as, as good as wireless is, not as good as that. But it's, this is all the stuff you do hands-on when it comes to Arduino or Ethernet. You just want to hands like, on. That's do what this something. show is about. Yeah, I like that. This is it. So, um, Spark Fun is where we got this. I, we should mention the Arduino, the source code, the hardware, and everything is open source. They call this open source hardware, and that's really cool too. But if you make something with it, you got to share it like every with everybody else. Let the world know. By the way, guys, if you want links to everything we talked about, if you want to know, if you want to give us uh, show ideas, you can find out at twit.tv slash kh. It's got our contact information there as well. You can give us an email at knowhow at twit.tv. Leave us a call at 408-800-KNOW. If you want to rewatch old episodes, find out about the emergency kit or how to make the web work for you, any old episode, they're available there with lots of show notes, lots of links, everything we talked about in one location, twit.tv slash kh. Sparkfun.com. For the cables, monoprice.com. Monoprice is good. There's, yep. there's so many different vendors. Yep. We'll have yep. links to like everything. I like Hey, thank you. Well, now that you've uh, seen all of this with the Arduino, now that you know how to make a little fan spin with an Arduino, why don't you go out and do that? Yeah, It's a servo. It's a servo. It's the world's worst fan. It's I can, a terrible maybe, fan. Maybe I should program it to be faster.